Hello everybody, um, just here to talk a little bit about summer, not the non-existent summer that we seem to be having here in the UK in 2023, but Vivaldi's summer. I'm in the process of preparing an edition of the Complete Opus 8, and so rather than uh, start the four seasons afresh, I'm using my Manchester edition of the seasons. That's an edition based on the manuscript copy that's in Manchester, and then sort of changing it where changes need to be made. Most of the differences are fairly cosmetic. A couple of interesting things in terms of slurs, phrase markings, where there are sort of quite significant differences. If you were going to a concert to hear it, you probably wouldn't notice, but it has implications as to whether you use a down bow or an up bow, so it's quite important for us when we're playing it. Um, interestingly, this phrase right at the beginning of summer, you can see this bar here, and this bar here, and this bar here have slurs over the first two notes and not the third consistently. Interestingly, in the second violin part in the Opus 8, this, this is the Opus 8 version, in the second violin part, for the first statement of this initial theme, the slur actually extends throughout the whole bar, which is exactly as it appears in the Manchester version. Now, and if we go to the end of the concerto, there's this, this again in the second violin part, there are these, these huge leaps, and that, that's, that's very playable, as is, that's very playable. You just got to get over in time. Now, interestingly, in the Manchester version, he doesn't write that. He, this last bass note, if you like, is changed to a fifth higher. So you have to play a lot of da -da 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 dum, da -da 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 um, and at speed, that's really hard. Interestingly, in the at the end of the concerto where that comes back, it's not as it appears in the opening. It's a, as it appears in the Manchester version. As you can see there, you got a load of G's, and then it goes to E flat, and then you got a so you got two leaps. And then, I mean, that one's not so bad. It's it's things like that. That's not very nice. And then this one here, the E flat to the B flat, and then up to the D. I mean, that's just that's just nasty. No need for that. So I mean, I kind of wonder the the seasons were uh, in existence for possibly nearly ten years before before they were sent to the printing presses in Amsterdam. And I almost wonder whether. Vivaldi had had a score which got changed in certain places. We've seen plenty of Vivaldi manuscripts where he comes back at a later date and alters a movement really quite significantly. For instance, this concerto with B flat RV three six five. There's a there's the slow movement. Uh, middle section of five bars which actually is a rather a shame that he's taken out because that's where the only modulation in the movement happens so when we when we actually recorded it we put those five bars back because i thought it was better like that interestingly in the last movement as well vivaldi actually alters it significantly and so there are actually two versions of the of the finale so i think just because you get a a bit that he's scrubbed out, it doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't play it. Anyway, going back to summer, so I do wonder whether Vivaldi had one of his many copyists prepare a score or a set of parts to send to Amsterdam and then um, and maybe because Vivaldi's initial manuscript had been so tampered with it was a bit unclear or 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 something bits of the Manchester version of the seasons have actually survived through into the Opus 8. Anyway, going back to the subject matter of the concerto, with the sonnets that Vivaldi wrote for the seasons, if you actually look at all the subjects contained within the sonnets, it's, it's very, very typical of a composer of operas. There are so many, like, aria types, like, so you, like, get bird arias, you get 
goldfinch arias. I mean, I know goldfinch is another bird, but I mean, you do you get turtle dove arias, you get storm arias, you get hunting arias. You, you know, you get you get there's there's a there's a fantastic ice aria in Farnace, which is very I mean very similar to the opening of winter. Um, but so, so in the beginning of summer, you have this rather amazing. It's very 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 hot. Um, Interesting, Vivaldi doesn't write for the first four bars on on, on the downbeat, to which which means that you get so, so you don't have um, you don't have a or you don't have a weight in the bar, so it just feels totally sort. It should feel so hot, it's sort of almost lifeless. Then you get you get the cuckoo, so that's a that's a standard operatic kind of aria cuckoo. There you go. He says tutto sopra il canto which means play it all on the A string. Now, I have to say, if you take that literally until where he says Sopra il Cantino over here, which means on the E string, I mean, I don't know, I don't know any player in their right mind that would play that up the A string. I really don't. So anyway, I don't do that. I shift on bar 34. I go onto the E string down there. Anyway, so then you get the turtle dove and then you get the Gardolino. The goldfinch. Then we get these winds. Looks looks pretty windy, doesn't it? Look at that. And then this is this is really quite interesting. The peasants lament. He's obviously not having a lot of luck in love. Is our villanello? And to illustrate this, it's stuffed full of diminished fifths in the melody. Now the diminished fifth is quite important at this time. Because it was known as the Diavolus in Musica or Diavolo in Musica, Latin or Italian, plays man who takes choice. And that translates as the devil in music because it was, everybody was like, really, whoa, you know, this is a spooky, spooky, you know, interval. And so you got, I mean, it's stuffed full of an F, B, E flat, A, D flat, G. And it goes, it goes right the way through this, um, through, through this solo. And when you add to that the this weird ch chromatic bass which just keeps going you never get a you never get a full chromatic scale but it just it breaks off and then starts again and he breaks off and starts again i mean it's it's really i mean it's you know that's one of the things about the seasons i mean that's quite it's quite an exceptional piece of writing but because people know it so well they they don't really appreciate it for what it is it's all kind of hiding in plain sight if you like in the slow movement, the uh, you've got the um, trying to get a bit of bit of kick, but constantly being disturbed by the mosque and Mossoni, the flies and the gnats, and then you've got this approaching thunderstorm, which comes three or four times, and then the storm breaks. Now that's quite interesting because yes, you could you could think of it as a literal storm, but it, you could also think of it in operatic context a storm aria is used to um, illustrate a sense of mental turmoil so that's how i think of this piece there's some really cracking things that again because everybody knows it so well they don't really know i mean like this chord here being bath bath 44 that chord that one there that's not a chord or oh, it's not a it's not a it's not a recognised chord. It's just a complete dissonance. If you put the top two notes down an octave, you basically got the top three strings of the violin, which is, you know, it's like f fifth and fifth. The next one works fine. But, but I mean, it's quite interesting that nobody, nobody's really sort of talks about that. I mean, it's quite, it's quite astonishing. Can't think of any, anywhere else where you will finish on a smacking great big dissonance like that. A bit further down, again, you know, Vivaldi the violinist. Um, it's like sopra il tenore basso, uh, which means play it on the G string, which the basso is the G string, and the tenore is the D string, which is your, your pedal D there. So there you go. That's a bit of information on Vivaldi's summer. Next up, it'll be autumn.